Today, we are going to learn Unreal Engines for 360 VR video production. Unreal Engines can create 3D 3G animation like a 3D logo fly through or an entire photo real environment in 60 to 90 frames per second, which is right now impossible to capture with 360 VR camera. You can do this the same thing with the 3D application like Blender, Cinema 4D or 3D Max, but Unreal Engines has real-time render that will win in rendering speed as you will see in this tutorial. If you want to level up your 360 VR filmmaking game, learn a powerful new tool that used in Hollywood production like Disney The Mandalorian or HBO Game of Thrones, then meet our instructor today, Jonathan Winbush. What up, what up? Wimbush here. It's today. I'm excited to show you guys how we can get started in Unreal and get our projects rendered out in 360 degrees. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So if you're new to Unreal, once you go to Unreal.com and download the Epic Games Launcher, this is what it's going to look like when you first start to open it up. And so you want to make sure that you're clicked on the Unreal Engine tab here. And then if you come over to Library, and this is where you can download the different versions of Unreal Engine. The latest version right now is version 4.26, but as you can see, it will let you install previous versions too just in case there's any type of plugins you, you want to use for that or for whatever reason you can keep these installed as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to launch the latest version here just by clicking launch here or in the upper right hand corner you can launch it there as well and right now you see that we have this another box that opened up called the unreal project browser and so what i like to do is come down to here to this template right here this is film television and live events i'll click next and then I usually start with a blank slate here. So you click next again, and then it will give you an option. If you have like a RTX card and you could use ray tracing, you can click that here if you wanna enable ray tracing from the start. And then the starter content, this will just give you some models that you can start with and materials, but I already have something already set up. So I'm gonna click back and I'm gonna click on this project here that's called Creator Up. Just gonna double click on that one there because I did start to open something up already and I wanna show you guys how we could bring our project files from the marketplace into Unreal Engine so we don't even have to build stuff from scratch. And so this is Unreal Engine right here. And if I come down here to the lower left-hand corner where it says Content Browser, you can see I have a folder here called Infinity Blade Firelands. If I double click on this and then double click on Maps, you can see that we have one here called the forge. Now this is gonna be the level, like anything that's in orange like this, this is gonna be your different levels. So if I double click on this, you can see it's actually gonna open up the level and depending on your computer specs, this might take a couple of minutes or it might take a couple of seconds to open up, but this is actually a level built from Epic Games for one of their video games that they have. And so a lot of times they'll let you use a lot of assets 100% free for learning or the reason I like using this is because we have everything already built out. And so I'm just able to go in and show you guys how we could use this and render out a 360 image from it. And if you wanna use this same exact scene here, if I come back to my Epic Games launcher, and then if I come over here to Marketplace, you can see up top here, we actually have a tab called free. And so with Epic Games, they actually give a lot of the free content out every month. And then they have some stuff that's permanently free as well. So if I come down here to Marketplace Collection, if I scroll through here, like you can see right here for Edith Fitch, this is actually a video game and they give you all the different levels of the game that you can use in Unreal and just kind of experiment with. But if you want to use the one that I'm using for this example here, if I come down here, I think it's on page three. So if I keep scrolling down, it's this one right here. It's called Infinity Blade Firelands. So if I click on this right here, you can see that we have a button here. At first, if you don't already have this activated, it's gonna say free. But once you do click on the free button, you'll see it says add the project. So I'll click on this. And then you just have to kind of find a project that you wanna add it to, which I have a project here called Creator Up. And I already added it, so I'm not gonna do it again. So I'm gonna click don't add, but that's how you could get this scene into your project in Unreal. And before I move on again, if I come back to my Marketplace tab here, I'm actually gonna click back. I'm gonna show you the plugin that I'm gonna be using to render out 360 degrees out of Unreal Engine. So if I come up here to where it says search project, I'm gonna type in 360 camera. 
And we have this one pop up here. It's called Camera 360 by Ivan. So if I click on this, this is pretty much the plugin that I found that's the easiest way to be able to render out 360 degrees from Unreal Engine. Now I know it's a little bit pricey, but believe me, if you want to render out 360 from Unreal, this is pretty much the easiest way. And let me show you guys this document actually from Epic Games. So this is a tutorial that they put out on how to render out 360 from Unreal. But if I scroll through this tutorial here, I mean, it's pretty in depth, but I found it a little bit overly complicated. Like you can see, we have a lot of programming here in which I don't want to deal with. I'm a Cinema 4D artist. Whenever I'm working in cinema, I'm usually just used to clicking on the camera, click equitangular render, render it out, and you could call it a day. But with Unreal, it's a little bit more complicated to get set up. And so that's why I'm using this plugin here, which Ivan actually lent out to me so that I could do this tutorial. So big shout out to Ivan. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to grab this plugin to follow along. Hugh here do a quick insert. I know what you are thinking right now. This plugin is way too expensive. I like stereo 3D video and VR 180, and this is the only way right now to render out stereo. But if you don't care about stereo 3D, there is a way cheaper alternative that only costs $10 and allow you to have up to 8K 60 frame per second video output directly from Unreal Engine, then support ray tracing. This plugin is extremely useful for ArcVis in professional virtual tour, as you see this demo right here on YouTube. If you consider a 3 DOF 360 photo tour on a website as a virtual tour, that is not 100% correct. If an architecture firm asks you to do a virtual tour and you show up with your consumer install 361 x camera, you would just be making fun of. Don't be that guy or gal. The concept of a professional virtual tour literally means a tour in virtual reality in VR headsets, a photo real space that you can walk around and interact with your virtual hands. That is ArtVis, Architecture Visualization, and you can create that professionally with 3D software, photogrammetry, and Unreal Engine for real-time interaction. If you want to render out an HDRI photo or 260 video from an ArtVis project, this $10 plugin will be perfect for you. Here are some render 360 photo. They look a lot better than 360 photo capture with a camera. Luckily, the workflow in Unreal is exactly the same as Jonathan's going to show you. So let me pass the screen back to Jonathan in Unreal. So getting back into Unreal Engine, I'm just gonna right here where it says reflection capture needs rebuilt. That's basically just gonna rebuild our reflections here. So if I click on the little arrow that's next to the build, come right here to rebuild reflection captures. Just click on this and that should make that go away. And it gives us a lot better lighting in our scene. And then right here where it says lighting needs to be rebuilt. If I come over here to my real outliner, if I type in light, I'm gonna find my light source and I'm just gonna click on this one and make the light movable. And that basically means that all these lights that are movable are going to be dynamic lighting and you don't have to do any type of baking. So now everything is running in real time. And if you don't want to see all these little icons and everything around your screen, it's just to click on something in the scene, click G on your keyboard, and there you go. So now everything is clean in there. You don't have those little light icons and everything else. And if you want to navigate around your scene, I'm just holding the right click on my mouse right now. And if I hold W, that moves forward. If I hit S, that moves backwards. A will move to the left and D will move to the right. So if you're used to playing video games, this is exactly the same way you at work. Like if you're playing Doom or Call of Duty or Halo, these are the same exact controls that you're used to using when you're playing video games. So now to get the 360 camera in here, I'm just gonna have to do a little setup here. So I'm gonna come over here to where it says place actors, right here under search. I'm just gonna do a search for camera. And this one that says camera, I'm just gonna click and drag this into my scene, drag it up a little bit. And you can see this picture and picture window down here. This is just showing us what our camera view looks like. And if I click G again, that brings up this little camera icon so I can see exactly what's going on here. And so maybe let's move it back a tad bit. Okay, I'm just gonna do maybe like a flyover of this environment here. So maybe start something like this. And to be able to animate this camera, we're gonna to have to add a timeline to this project here, which is called a sequence. So if I look up here at the top where it says cinematics, I wanna click on this and I'm gonna click the top one that says add level sequence. 
and you can name it anything you want. I'm just gonna leave it at default. Actually, let me name it creator up. Then we're just gonna click save. And now you see that we have our timeline pop up here in which I like working at 60 FPS. So right here where it says 30 FPS, just gonna come over and click 60, but you can see you could customize it. Like the top that it goes is 240, but if you wanna go above that, you can actually make it go even faster. So I like working at 60, gives us a nice smooth camera move in here. So if I click on my camera and then come over to row outliner, I'm just gonna click this and drag it into my timeline here. So now we have our camera inside of our timeline. And so if you notice right here underneath, it says transform. If I scroll this down and let me move this up a little bit, you can see that we now have transforms for location, rotation, and scale. So I'm gonna click on a one that says location and there's a little plus button here. I'm gonna click on this and then I'm just gonna move this all the way to the end of my timeline. And then I'm just gonna do a camera move. So I'm just gonna do something simple, maybe just moving forward in our scene, something like that. And then I'm gonna click on location again and click on the plus key. So now if I come down here, I have my little play bar down here. If I click to front and then click play, you can see inside of here what's happening. And if I wanna see it full screen, let me drag this down. If I come over here to perspective and click on cinematic viewport, now we have like our play buttons and everything in our viewport. But if we click on perspective and select the camera, now if I click play here, we can see our camera move and everything inside of our sequence. And so if you wanna get out of your camera view, you just come over here to the eject button. And then I could go to default viewport and we're back to the way it was before. So now let me add the 360 camera in here so that we can attach it to our camera move here. So if I come over to content browser and let me click at the top folder here, this is content. And then I have a folder right here called camera 360. So I'm gonna double click on this, come over to blueprints, double click on this. And let me make this a little bit larger so we can see the naming conventions here. So if I come down to view options right here on the thumbnails, click on scale and just drag this up. So now we can see this a little bit larger so we can see the naming conventions. And so there's actually two blueprints in here that we wanna click and drag into our scene. And so this one right here, where it says camera underscore point underscore 360. And then if I hold the control key on my keyboard and right here where it says camera underscore rec underscore 360, I'm gonna select this one and then I'm just gonna left click and drag these into my scene. So now if I click off them, you can see that we have them here in our scene. And so the camera rec 360 gives us like this green block and we could pretty much just move this anywhere into our scene. And so the thing with this is we wanna make sure that it's not in the view of the camera because it will render out this green square. So if I just drag it somewhere out of the scene that we can't even see it, we should be good to go there. And then right here where it says camera underscore point underscore 360, we want to align this with our camera with the move on it. So what I'm gonna do from here is make sure that I have camera 360, camera underscore point underscore 360, have this selected, come down here to my details panel and where it says default. Right here we have an option for target all transform. I'm gonna click on this eyedropper here and then I'm gonna click on the camera that has our movement and there you see that the camera jumped up into there. But if I come to my timeline here and play, you can see that it's not actually doing a camera move. So to be able to connect these together, I'm just actually gonna click on my world outliner, come under camera, make sure I have the one selected with the 0.360, just click and drag that under my movable camera here. And now if I play this through, you can see that we actually have movement in here now. And so the next step from here is we actually wanna bring in our camera underscore rec underscore 360 into our timeline. So if I scroll this up a little bit, come back to my world outliner, click and drag this into my timeline. Now we can attach this camera cuts track to this. So I wanna make sure I'm at the very start of my frame here. And right here where it says camera, I'm gonna select this. And then right here where it says existing binding, click camera underscore rec underscore 360. And now we make sure that when we render out, it's gonna be in 360 degrees. So I wanna right click right here where it says camera cuts track. There's another option that we're gonna to have to select. So if I come over to edit, it says is active. I'm gonna click on this. And that basically grayscales this out, but that means that now instead of this camera being active, we're activating a 360 camera. And if I come to my timeline here and my row outliner, if I come down here to autoplay, 
And then if I click on the play button here, it should play it back here in 360. And there we go. So now we have our 360 camera moving here. You can see that we have red at the top of the bottom, but don't worry about that. We can actually fix that whenever we go to render it out. So let's say that we're happy with our camera move and everything here. So the next step from here is to actually render this out. So if I come over here to window, come down to cinematics, come over to movie render queue, I'm going to click on this. And this is actually the new way of rendering out in Unreal Engine. So there's a green button here. If I click on this green render, I'm going to click on the timeline that I actually made. So creator up underscore timeline. I'm going to click on this and then I'm actually going to save it down here in my sequencer. This little icon here that has the disc. I'm going to click on this to just make sure everything is saved. And then once I have all that set up, I'm going to click right here where it says unsaved config. And I'm just going to leave it at JPEG for this example, but you do have some options here. Like if I click on this green button for settings, we can actually render out an Apple ProRes, which is going to make an extremely large file. So I would be cautious about that. We can render out Final Cut, a bitmap, EXR, PNG, and Wave. But again, just for this example, I'm just going to leave it at JPEG. And then if I click on the settings here again, we can actually add like anti-aliasing to this and stuff. So if I come right here where it says anti-aliasing, I could click on this, but I do want to be careful with it. The higher that we make this setting, the longer it's going to take the render. So somewhere that's around a safe number, depending on your setup there, it might be two or three. So I'm just going to click two there. And then for my output setting, I'm just going to actually right here where it says output directory. I'm going to click on these three little dots here and just select the folder that I have set up for renders. So I'm gonna come over to this folder here, select folder, and then right here, this is where we can set our resolution. And so just to start off, I'm actually just gonna do a monoscopic render, but I can show you guys how we could do a stereo render as well before I hit render. So right here where it says output resolution, I'm gonna make the X 5760, and I'm gonna make the Y 2880. And then everything else, I'm pretty much just going to leave at default. So I'm just going to click accept here. And then right here on this arrow, I'm just going to scroll it down just to make sure that it says camera underscore rec underscore 360. It means it's going to use that one there. And before I actually render this out, let me click on my camera in my raw outliner, camera underscore rec underscore 360. And if you did want to render it out in like stereo, right under here where it says projection, where it says models 360 plane, you can see right now it's at 360 mono. But if we click on this, it gives us some other options as well. And so if you want to do top and bottom render, just use this one here that says 360 underscore stereo. And then you would just change your resolution to match that and you should be good to go there. And so I'm just going to leave it at mono for this example. I'm going to click on render right here, render local. And you can see now it's starting to render our scene out. It's using, you know, equitangular mono setup here. It's going pretty fast. Like we're actually at frame 45 or 300. It's going like a frame a second pretty much. And if I was rendering out of Cinema 4D like I'm used to, like I've done some projects with you, like that one for the Special Olympics, that one actually took me a couple of days just to render out the intro sequence there. Yeah, we did in stereo, but I mean, at least took me like eight to 10 minutes per frame. Right now, you can see that we're actually doing it within, you know, like a couple of frames per second, which is amazing. And yeah, I would definitely recommend this for everybody to at least start getting familiar with Unreal, especially if you want to render out 360 degrees graphics. So everything rendered out as planned. That didn't go too long at all. And so to test this out, I'm actually going to find the folder where I rendered everything to. So I'm going to come over to my SSD drive 360 renders. And you can see that we have all of our files rendered out here. So this is just a JPEG sequence in which if I look at the very first frame here, this frame is always a little bit funky. So all I do is go in, delete out the first frame, and then everything else should be fine here. And so to be able to make this playable, I'm just going to use Adobe Media Encoder. Like we can render out Apple ProRes out of Unreal, but like I said, those file sizes usually are pretty large. And so I like rendering out a sequence and then just bring it into Media Encoder and just render out a quick time from there. So I have Media Encoder open right now. So I'm just going to click on the plus button. I'm already pointed at my rendered folder. I want to make sure that I'm on JPEG file sequence. Click on open here. And then I'm just going to click where it says match source. In my settings that I'm just going to use is H264. I'm just going to scroll down here, render at maximum depth, come down a little bit more. Right here where it says bitrate settings, I'm going to do VBR two pass, just drag it all the way up 240. 
And then this is the most important button where it says VR video. I'm just gonna make sure that I have monoscopic selected, make sure this is checked on for video is VR. And then I'm gonna use maximum quality, click okay. And then I'm just gonna let this render out as well. So it looks like everything rendered out in media encoder here. So let me come down to my folder. I'm gonna double click on this file here. And now you can see we have playback in 360 degrees. Yeah, and there we go. So this is how our scene looks inside of Unreal in 360 degrees. And yeah, that's basically how you would do it. Just another quick note, most of the time you are not going to directly render from your Unreal Engine. You want to bring in the Unreal Render, the JPEG sequence into Adobe Premiere and mix it with your regular 360 VR video. So let me teach you how to do that. Right click on the project window right here and actually go into the folder that Jonathan just rendered for me. In here, click the first sequence, the first image right here. And then make sure that you check image sequence right here. So you render out. So you import it into a full video. So you can grab this full video image sequence and the new icon right here. And then create a new sequence. If you play it, it's a top and bottom stereoscopic video. It's a really big file. So I my machine is actually challenging to play back. It's high quality it's top and bottom stereoscopic video. If you look at the sequence setting right here, uh, if it doesn't, so make sure that uh, the projection is in, if you go rectangular, stereoscopic, uh, over and under, if you mono, you got to just pick monoscopic. And then when you hit the VR button, you actually see VR right now, right here. If you play that, you see that you actually see an immersive video right here. And that is where you can do your further editing. Uh, one thing I would like to do is sometimes you will have your render out from Unreal, but the horizon line is all messed up. So I would go ahead and you should just add a VR projection tool on any video to mix it with my other video captured with a real camera. And then from here, I will try to adjust the row to make sure the horizon line is perfectly straight. And this is one is actually perfectly straight right now. So we don't need to do anything, but if anything like uh, have issue, uh, actually at minus four, three to make it straight. But if anything have issue, you can adjust your horizon line right here. And also you can adjust your center point right here to mix with other video. So that is the plugin that you definitely need You'll put on your image sequence before you go out render and that is just the same thing Jonathan just showed you and you hit Control M on the PC and go ahead and render your sequence for delivery. So hopefully this helped you guys out. I want to thank you and everybody at Creator Up for having me on. I know we did the live stream and I promised this for you guys. So hopefully I followed through and everything is simplified for you guys. So if this did help you out, make sure you follow me on YouTube at youtube.com slash Jonathan Wimbush. I hope you enjoyed this Unreal Engine tutorial for cinematic VR production. We are going to teach you how to use Unreal to create 3D animation next to integrate with green screen VR production and volumetric capture for desktop video experience. If you are a beginner and you want to learn Unreal Engines, I would highly, highly recommend to check out Jonathan Winbush Unreal course on mograph.com. I will put the link down in the description down below. Happy New Year's everyone, and we will see you in the next epic video.